Okay, let's see if you can go ahead and graph this line and its inverse, okay? And when you do this, and you gotta do this pretty accurately, you're gonna see something interesting, uh, which you absolutely need to know. Now, this is not some trivial matter, and you're like, well, you know, this guy's just trying to, you know, make up some uh, algebra video uh, to get some views. No, really, I'm trying to help you out. If you are studying algebra, you need to understand uh, about inverse functions, okay? And we're gonna study uh, this concept of inverse functions uh, by using this nice, simple example. But this is stuff that you need to know. Uh, so if you're interested in doing well in algebra, and stick around for a few minutes, you're going to kind of uh, either learn this for the first time, um, or two, kind of maybe reinforce uh, things that you probably maybe weren't quite sure about, right? Whatever it is, you know, uh, you'll gain some value from this video hopefully. Now, if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and pause the video. I would say give yourself about oh, three minutes and try to make your graphs accurate because uh, if you just, you know, if they're kind of sloppy, you really won't be able to see the property that I want to emphasize here. But um, anyways, if you think you could do the problem again, you know, pause the video and see what you come up with. It'd be a nice little pop quiz. But I'm going to walk through this step by step in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can uh, check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm gonna be launching a pre-calculus here in about a week, very excited about that. Um, I also have many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, maybe the Accuplacer, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, teacher certification exam, many, many others, I can help you out. Just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. All these exams have math sections. If you don't do well on, those, on the math section, you don't do well on the exam. Uh, so I can help you out. Now, if you're studying for an exam and I don't have that uh, particular exam, draw me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with uh, homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program, then obviously help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're uh, truly serious about wanting to improve in math or be great at math, then you got to be great at this. That's no taking. You're here to, uh, you know, watching this video because you're clearly interested in mathematics and you're probably a student. Okay? I don't want to make too many assumptions, but you probably are. Uh, I'm just telling you right now, okay, you can watch all the videos in the world, but if you don't take great math notes, you're still going to struggle. So I've been teaching mathematics for decades. Those students who take great math notes almost always do very well. And then those students who were like me, way back in the good old 1980s, uh, I was taking notes, but um, the notes I was taking was, hey, uh, Billy, what are you doing this weekend? Are you going to that party? Yada, yada, yada. And of course, I would end up grades that look like that. So, you know, if you're having a tough time in math, you got to ask yourself, are you putting in uh, the effort? Okay, and the effort is you got to stay focused on a daily basis. There's too much information in math to just kind of, uh, you know, not be paying attention. So as you're improving in your notes, you can use my notes uh, to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into um, this problem. And the first part of this is we're going to find the inverse of this thing, okay? So if you're not sure how to do this, by the way, I have a lot of videos uh, on my cha uh, YouTube channel in my uh, algebra playlist on functions and uh, finding the inverse, et cetera. So you can, you know, continue on to practice this stuff. Um, I'll, I'll say this much. If you, if you don't know what you're doing here, okay, if you're still lost, you got to really, you know, um, continue to study this because this is very, very important in algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and first talk about how to find the inverse. So here, this is an equation, all right? Obviously, it has this little equal sign. So um, from a description standpoint, we would call this thing, there's a lot of ways we can uh, describe this, but probably the most common way, well, let's just um, have a few descriptions. This is an equation of a line, okay? But more technically appropriate, this is what we call a linear, a linear equation, okay? 
Now this y right here, y is equal to, this would make, makes this a, uh, uh, an equation. Now y is also equal to something called f of x, okay? So that's like function uh, notation. So I could rewrite this thing as this f of x is equal to 3x plus 2, okay? These things are one of the same. This is a linear equation, and this is a function, a linear function, okay? So just know that if you come across a function, and I'm saying, hey, find the inverse function, and that notation would look like this, what you need to do is take that f of x and just put uh, make that equal to y. Okay, so this is, they're, they're basically equivalent. This is in uh, function notation. This is just an equation notation, but we need to um, have this y. So if you come across, again, the function notation, rewrite that as y. All right, so hopefully I made that clear enough. And, um, you know, I emphasize things that I know students are going to be confused about. Now, why would I know that? How could I possibly understand why I would, you know, can predict like with these magical uh, powers, why students are going to be confused about things. Well, it's probably because I've graded um, 100 million different homework quizzes and tests over uh, decades of teaching mathematics. Now, maybe not that much, but a lot, right? And you see patterns of where students typically get confused. And it's not just, say, that maybe my teaching style. It's just generally the way it was. I'm sure I was confused way back in the good old days. But anyways, let's get into the inverse, okay? So when we uh, want to find the inverse function, okay, now I'm calling this a function. i got to make sure this thing has y. It already does. All right, the first thing we need to do is we're going to uh, switch the x and the y. So I'm going to put this x where y is at. I'm going to put the uh, this y where x is at. And when you do that, you get this. Okay, you get x is equal to 3y uh, plus 2 right here. Okay. Now, once you've done that, once we did a little switch, you have to solve for y. All right. So if we could solve for y, we will have the inverse function of this guy. Now, uh, another thing that I'm not um, talking about here, because functions and inverse functions are a huge topic. Not all functions have inverses. This goes on and on and on. So Again, you know, this is only one aspect of, of uh, a broader study of functions, which is extremely important in algebra. Just remember that word functions. You know, there's a lot to know, but it's fun, okay, because that's what the root word is. It's fun functions. So this is just a little sliver of some of the stuff you need to know about functions, what we're talking about here. All right, let's get back to our problem. So uh, we have x is equal to 3y plus 2. I need to solve for y. So I'll put this 3y plus 2 on this side and put the x on this side. And then when I solve for y, I get y is equal to 1 third x uh, minus 2 thirds. Now, if you don't know how I did this right here, then you're uh, in need of some basic algebra equation solving uh, skills. Okay, so you're going to have to go back and look at that. Fortunately for you, um, I have a ton of videos on solving basic equations in my uh, pre-algebra or algebra playlist, but um, better yet, just maybe just sign up for my Algebra 1 course in my Math Help program. You'll really learn this stuff. So this right here is the inverse function. Now, I could verify that, but that's not the point uh, in this video. What I want to uh, show you is this specific property about the graphs. All right, so here, let me erase this. So here is our uh, function. And this is its inverse. Or I could say, here's the function and here's its inverse, OK? So now what I want you to do is to go ahead and graph these two lines. So this is kind of part two of this challenge. Let's say you didn't know how to find the inverse. Well, I'm like, OK, well, here's the inverse. Here's how you do it. Uh, so now go ahead and graph these lines. Now, if you have graphing paper, that's awesome. But if not, just draw some nice, you know, very nice, neat uh, x, y uh, plane. And then, you know, uh, you know, precisely graph this. Again, if you're uh, sloppy with this, you're not going to be able to see the property that I'm trying to uh, discuss. Okay, so let me show you my graph. And let's go ahead and plot both of these lines. So here is the first line, okay? Y equals 3x plus 2. So that would be this line in yellow, okay? So that can be at, uh, let's say, 2. And I'm just, of course, you know, I'm just kind of estimating here. Go up the three. And here's the slope. Da, 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 da. I'm just kind of estimating right here. Uh, quick sketch. Uh, sketch. Let me see, make sure my 
um, scales not messed up here. It might be a little messed up, but you know what? It's uh, relatively, whoops, whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't want that to happen. Get my little y-axis back. But anyways, this line more or less represents this line right here, okay, this sketch. Now, y equals one-third x minus two, this line is this line in blue, okay? So this line here, and then we're talking about sketches here. You don't have to be 100% precise, but you can't be totally sloppy either. So this is uh, this line, and this is this line. So if we look at what's going on, there seems to be some connection, right? I mean, uh, hopefully, you're like, is there a pattern, or they're kind of crisscrossing here? Well, there is, okay? And this is the pattern that I really wanted you to know from the get-go, that a, fu uh, a function and its inverse their graphs will be symmetric along the y equals x line. So y equals x, what is that line? Well, that line is a 45 degree angle line. It goes through here. This has a slope of one. Uh, one over one is the, is the rise over the run. So we gotta know something about, um, you know, how to graph lines, right? So this is kind of more or less, I'm just sketching this here, uh, y equals x line. Okay, the y equals x line and it's gonna go through this point of intersection. So when you're studying functions and their inverses, uh, oftentimes you're asked to graph them, uh, but when you do so, make sure you graph this little y equals x line uh, because there's symmetry here, okay? In other words, this thing uh, is symmetric uh, to this thing. There's the, this is an ax, um, axis of symmetry. Okay, so if you kind of, they're basically like mirror images of one another. So this is our function and this is our inverse function. And so, uh, now this is the only unique property about functions and their inverse. As uh, Let me just kind of throw in a little bonus here as well. So here is a function and here is the inverse function. So as you uh, uh, know or should know, let's just do this real quick domain and range uh, and domain and range. Now, if uh, what I'm talking about here uh, doesn't make any sense if you're like completely lost, just this is stuff that you need to um, work on, okay? So every function has a domain and range, okay? So here we have an inverse function. It has a domain and range as well. Well, this domain right here points to this range, okay? When we're talking about functions. Well, an inverse function, Let's just make something up here real quick. Let's say this is one, two, three, and this goes to this function right here, five, six, seven, okay? Well, the inverse function, what happens is the domain, the domain becomes the range, and the range becomes the domain. So, in the inverse function, it's gonna be five, six, seven, and that's gonna point to one, two, three. Okay, so there's a lot of way, different ways we need to think about functions and the inverses, and there's even more things that we need to uh, uh, know about. But basically, uh, functions and their inverses is something uh, that we need to know a lot about. Uh, just the broader topic of functions is huge in mathematics. But um, again, the main idea of this video was to show you that uh, when you have a function and its inverse, it's going to be the graphs are going to be symmetric along this y equals x line. So make sure you show that um, accurately uh, in any test or quizzes or homework that you might be doing in any kind of algebra course. And if you do that, uh, your teacher will be very impressed. Matter of fact, they may be like, wow, you know, that, uh, they really know what they're doing. Hey, I bet you they're watching that guy on YouTube, um, that tablet class dude, uh, whatever the case is. Listen, whether you learn from me or somewhere else, as long as you show it, that's what makes a difference. All right, so if this video was helpful in small, uh, some small, tiny way, then please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And uh, if uh, you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for about 10 years. Um, I have over 1,000 plus videos. That's a lot of work to make a thousand videos like this. You know, you, <laughs> you just can't do that in a month or a year. Uh, and what I try to do is try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. But I have a, a lot of math topics uh, from basic to advanced mathematics. So if you kind of like my teaching style, please take a, uh, advantage of my videos. They're there for you. Now, if you're having a tough time in your math course, then, you know, really take a look at your disciplines. Uh, work harder, take better notes, talk to your math teacher. But if you need uh, additional help beyond that, again, 
There's tons of free resources. And if you like my teaching style, uh, uh, you got my videos, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, uh, remember, functions is a huge topic. This is not some trivial thing. Keep this stuff in mind and follow through, okay? So if you're like, yeah, I think I got this, you know, do something with it. Follow through until you can kind of master it, right? So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.